Thank you everyone for joining my webinar on writing, creativity and getting published. Today I'll share as much as I know about these topics and hopefully you'll find it useful as well. Um, I'm going to structure the webinar into three parts. Uh, the first part is about writing itself, the act of coming up with an idea uh, which has potential to get published, how to choose an idea like that, how to come up with an idea like that. So that'll be uh, the first part of the webinar. In the second part, I'll uh, take you through a journey of editing because I think editing is often an underrated, but one of the most crucial parts in the uh, in the journey to get published. And then uh, finally, I'll take you through my experiences with publishing and marketing, how to find a literary agent. Once you find a literary agent, how to negotiate a deal with a publisher and then how to market your novel to make it a success. Uh, this would also hold true for nonfiction books as well. Um, although I have predominantly dealt in fiction, um, but, but the same principles would be applicable to all kinds of writing that you do. Uh, before I start though, I did want to share my overall uh, principle about writing. In, in some senses, I believe that the journey of writing is very similar to life in, in a way that I believe in, uh, in, in what I term infinite potential. I believe that if you decide today that you want to write a New York Times bestselling novel or a New York Times bestselling nonfiction book, uh, you can do that. You know, every man has the, or, or woman for that matter, everybody has the uh, ability to do, uh, to be, as whatever they want to be. So I believe that with some tips, some techniques, some tricks, um, and then a lot of hard work, anybody can be an excellent writer and anybody can be a commercially successful writer. So I'll take you through my own journey in, in this uh, process. And uh, I have learned a lot from 2008 when my first book was published in India as a commercial fiction book uh, to, to this year, call it 2015. In seven years, I've moved from a uh, a commercial novelist in India to what is being termed as a, a literary fiction in the US. So this is my first international book deal for in the US and UK and India. And it's a hardcover book uh, called Literary Fiction. So I've kind of almost in these seven years taught myself A, how to write and then B, how to move my writing to a deeper and deeper space. So I've kind of been through that journey myself without any professional training. So I'm going to try to uh, share some thoughts on uh, what I learned along the process. Uh, so let me start with writing itself. And um, I have published a lot of information on my blog about all the books that I read. So I've read about 50 to 60 books in the course of the last five years about writing. I've read a lot of articles in almost every newspaper, magazine, etc. So I'm kind of like a try to be a student of writing constantly. So today I won't take you through any formulas because there are entire books devoted to it. If you are interested in certain techniques and formulas, uh, visit my blog and you'll be able to kind of get the names of a couple of books that I believe in and you can and you can look at that. Um, but I, today, rather than formulas, I wanted to share kind of some overall principles of how to become a better writer, right? Um, and my first principle, on, uh, first principle is also answering a very common question I receive, which is how do I get a great idea? How do I know that, if, that it is a great enough idea for me to spend the next couple of year, months or years of my life writing a book. Um, so my first kind of uh, uh, judgment on whether an idea is great or not is I use only two principles, meaning and entertainment. So to repeat again, if an idea is meaningful and if an idea has some kind of entertainment built into it, and when I mean entertainment, I mean uh, excitement, a story, an adventure built into it, then I think that the idea is a home run. So, so as you start kind of thinking of creating an idea for your book, uh, think of touching these two vectors. One, meaning. Are you truly committed to creating a new thought in the world? Are you really pushing yourself to, to not just write for the sake of getting published or get adulation or get fame, but you're truly writing to contribute a new thought in the world? Then you know that your idea has meaning. Um, again, you're not writing a philosophical spiritual discourse that only you can read. A good book, whether fiction or nonfiction, is a great page turner. You are motivated to keep reading and uh, uh, to keep turning the pages. And that happens when there is a good strand of entertainment built into the book. So, so that's your first question to ask. Does the idea have meaning? And does the, is the idea entertaining? 
Uh, I'll give you an example uh, from uh, for, for, for myself, for my latest book, The Seeker. Uh, before I kind of actually began writing, I truly kind of tried to ask myself, why was I writing this book? And I did reach the conclusion that there was a new thought that I wanted to contribute in the world. Uh, writing uh, all over the world, uh, the spiritual search has become very new agey and hippie. You know, people talk about chakras and kundalini and all of this stuff in a reasonably kind of frivolous uh, uh, way without fully understanding the deep spiritual concepts of our of the ancient sages and stuff and I wanted to make this um, spiritual quest almost very hard very masculine and very um, kind of tough you know because that was that was what like the razor's edge of the Upanishads was so I wanted to contribute a new thought in the world that a spiritual search is very is is a is a very deliberate hardcore quest and not something spacey and new agey so right so i wanted to kind of like this was kind of the meaning of my book but i knew that if i just kind of wrote about like a, a spiritual search or a journey of enlightenment that is a very very internal novel and a very thinky kind of novel with a lot of um you know like uh, kind of mind stuff and 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 doesn't make you kind of automatically turn the pages right so then the entertainment for me in this novel became the external adventure of my protagonist as he goes from the projects in new york uh, to the to wall street to kind of uh, to india through hidden ninth buckets and, and ashrams that are secret in in south india and then it goes to a freezing cave in the high in the himalayas so the entire external adventure became uh, the entertainment aspect of the novel so i knew that i had enough kind of meaning as at the base and an entertainment to know that that idea would be enough for me to go and start exploring further into writing. So, so I would say that's my one criteria. If I look at a book like uh, Harry Potter, for instance, right, it's an extremely popular book. Obviously, we all know that's extremely entertaining and very good to read. But if I look at it at, a, at its most basic level, there is a lot of meaning in the book, right? The meaning in the book is that, um, that in the end, what rescues Harry is not magic, but his own strength and his own ability to kind of uh, tap into his inner layers of strength, right? So, so I think that's kind of the power of uh, Harry Potter because it kind of hits on both entertainment and meaning. Um, so, so I think that would be my first criteria. Now, the second uh, kind of point I wanted to make about writing is how do you come up with an idea like that? And I have a very simple philosophy on that: live an interesting life. So, so if you're li truly living a, a, a very interesting life, you become a better writer. And when I mean an interesting life to deconstruct it uh, further, are you truly causing a lot of disruption in your life, right? Because life has a tendency to follow a steady course. You, um, you know, you graduate from college, you have a job, then you get married, you have kids, then you work hard in your job, you climb the corporate ladder. It's a very steady course of activity. You'll have a few vacations a year. But if you're not causing enough disruption in your life, then you probably will never be able to uncover layers of yourself that help you go deeper and deeper. So, so for me personally as well, I think my writing has gotten deeper over the past few years because I've consciously kind of disrupted my life. You know, so after a couple of years of working, I would uh, take a year off and take and, and, and backpack in the world for a year, you know, with whatever little money I had left or you know, with my savings. Then again, I would work for a few years. And then in the about two years back, Kerry, my wife and I took a year off to kind of learn yoga in an ashram in India, like travel from Europe to India by road. So there's always been this constant hunger for me to experience things and, and challenge myself and push my boundaries. And I think that leads to both kind of meaning because it like um, uh, helps me uncover things about myself that I don't know. So it gives me a, a kind of a lot more depth as a person. And, and also it fills my life with stories, right? If you're going from Europe to India by road, uh, definitely more things will happen to you than uh, driving to office every day, right? So, so there's always this um, entertainment and meaning combination that comes through when you disrupt your life in, uh, in in almost a very regular fashion. So, I would say that's my second kind of principle of good writing is if you lead an interesting life, you'll end up having interesting writing, right? So, I think that's kind of my second thought. And then the third kind of overall thought on writing for me is to have a very very strong sense of schedule. Right to be extremely deliberate about when you're writing, and that's a common question that I receive: is how do you find the time, etc. I just believe that if you make the commitment to show up to your desk every day 
and also have I, I believe in word targets and, uh, and I know different uh, writers operate differently but that's worked extremely consistently and successfully for me is that on my uh, on my work days when I have like a full-time corporate job so I do work in corporate America so if I'm working from uh, nine to six and I come back I make it a target that I finish 400 words or th between 300 and 400 words in a day before I go to sleep right so that's kind of a very consistent if I'm working I'm, I'll be writing 300 to 400 words and if I'm not working whether that be the weekend or if I end up taking a sabbatical then I have a minimum target of thousand words a day right so so once you kind of like these things add up um, my personal advice to anybody is if you can take three months off from work to write a book I think that's the best use of or I think that's the best way to write because your emotional energy is extremely concentrated into one um, you know into one thing um, you have uh, just kind of the mental freedom to to concentrate on the act of writing and to constantly get better at it and then you have flow like you're you're not kind of breaking and being interrupted with other thoughts and coming back to different thoughts and you're, you're not kind of in this constant disruption mode so if you can take three months off from work but surprisingly enough i'm a strong believer that if you're good at your job anybody will give you that time um you uh, you can complete one draft of a novel so i believe that the first draft of a novel if you can write full time i didn't do it for my first two books and i regret that uh, for my third book i did take that six month window to kind of completely immerse myself in writing the book uh, i would highly recommend that because just just think of it an average book length is about eighty thousand words if you're able to write thousand words a day um you will be able to complete the first draft call it in a three month period right uh, and and the same thing if you're writing 300 words a day will take nine months and the quality is not going to be as high because you will probably have various broken uh, streams of thought so i think if you're able to take the three months off to write a book i would highly recommend that if not i would be extremely consistent about coming in every day giving your 300 words on the weekend giving 700 words and you realize that all other aspects of life just kind of fit into that so so uh, so those are uh, I would say some principles on a how to pick an idea entertainment and meaning how to come up with ideas like that is to lead a very very interesting life and third when you have come up with an idea how to write that book is to be extremely scheduled and extremely disciplined about that schedule uh, my fourth and final advice on this writing section before i move to editing is to um to almost always be a student of writing right like so i think i, I think that i've seen this tendency too many times in uh, especially young writers in india today that they kind of are able to write their first book which is typically pretty autobiographical and is decent it's not bad and then they kind of get into this pattern of writing immediately after that and then another book comes out next year and then another books come out in two years so there's this hurry to somehow keep getting published but i i don't um, i guess personally i don't really I uh, think that just um, like just getting words like this is not like a like a Bollywood uh, you know uh, star life that you have to constantly be in relevance by coming out with a book once a year like it doesn't really matter come out with things that matter and uh, take the time to do that uh, so uh, so for me uh, the kind of kind of fourth principle of writing is almost being a student of it means take a lot of time to learn the craft of writing even if you don't do a full MFA. There are many, many books available. Some of them I've mentioned in my blog. There are other books. All of them have different formulas, different ways of approaching things. I would read all of them because they, they just kind of like give you different ways to think about it. So I've kind of like personally in the last few years really taught myself how to write. And that's kind of really led to a lot of dividends because I don't think I would have ever had an international publishing deal with my background without any creative writing background unless I'd actually gone through that journey. So, so I would highly recommend doing that. Um, other than that, there are many formulas on writing. Uh, the one that I use, which is very simple, is LOCK, which is L-O-C-K. There is a lead uh, or a protagonist who has an objective. That's the O. There is conflict in his path or her path towards getting that objective. And then finally, there's the K, which is a knockout. The protagonist either wins or loses. So any novel can kind of typically follows um, that path and i guess every strong story kind of follows that path so i think that's kind of a like a reasonably simple easy framework but i won't even be able to touch the iceberg of all the frameworks available in this webinar so uh, i would highly encourage you to do that on your own okay um so great so you have a you have written a book now 
uh, you had an idea, you pursued the idea, you wrote the book, now the book is ready. What do you do next? So the second topic that I want to talk about in great depth is editing, because I think editing is what makes successful writers. I'm a very, very big believer in editing and the importance of the editing process. And I have two, uh, I, have, I have a very, very simple rule of that. But before I get into the rule, to give you an example of my own uh, writing for this novel, The Seeker, um, I wrote the novel, my first draft was just, I, I wrote my first draft in about three or four months time, second draft in another two months time. So call it in the first six months, I kind of had the first and second draft. But for almost six or seven months after that, or, or actually even longer, for nine months after that, I have just been, I just edited the novel again and again through using different people in the mix, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But you, but in a, in a, in think of about a 15 month journey, four months was the first couple of drafts and 11 months was the editing draft. The good news is that for editing, I don't think you need to work full time you, uh, or uh, write full time. You can be working and then writing on the side. I think for the first couple of drafts, it's good to be uh, working on it full time. But after that, you can kind of get to a more of a half time schedule. But I think the importance of editing is I, if I'd sent my, I guess, half baked first couple of drafts after five, six months out, I don't think I would ever have got a publishing deal um, or at least an international publishing deal. And then the act of like fine tuning and fine tuning and fine tuning and fine tuning really led to, I guess, my uh, successful, um, uh, you know, the successful international publishing deal, which again, I'll go I'll talk through in the final stage. So I'm, I'm a huge believer in editing and the rule I follow is what I call the two, two, two rule, um, which is first do two drafts of the book, pause, take a week off or whatever, and not write in that week. Um, after doing two drafts of the book, hire a freelance editor. Now, they do not cost much depending on how you look at it. I think it's a very, very good investment to make. Um, I have recommended some freelance editors on my blog. Uh, they, the ones that I use are in the US because uh, India doesn't really have a freelance editing infrastructure yet. And, uh, and after two drafts, when you send the, uh, uh, when you send the book to a freelance editor, ask for a, what, what they call a descriptive edit and not a line edit. So a descriptive edit means that a freelance editor will read your whole book and, and ask or pose structural questions in the story. Is this character developed? Is this scene, are the scenes fully developed? Is, does the story have a good arc? Is the beginning exciting? Is the ending exciting? So they'll kind of look at the book as a whole and not get into commas and, uh, you know, words and uh, like kind of line and copy edits. They'll get into the heart of the story that you're trying to tell and truly help you understand that story and kind of force you to make it better. Um, so I, so uh, I, I, uh, the one I used was Sarah Seifer, who's kind of in, I mentioned in my blog as well. Her name is Sarah Seifer, who was outstanding. I think she charged me $700. So I think it's kind of under $1,000 is the charge for a freelance editor at a descriptive edit stage. And it has been incredibly useful. Since then, I have told uh, many of my writer friends to use that. And they all have found that stage very, very helpful. Because in your first two drafts, you're still trying to tell the story to yourself. And it's not ready to share with the world yet. So it's extremely good for somebody professional to give you an input. right? So, so you have two drafts then the editor will come back with extremely deep, thoughtful comments. And then again, I would say in the 2-2 rule, you again take two more drafts to get the story right based on the descriptive editor's feedback. You're, after these four drafts, you're in a decent enough state to start sending the book out to agents or publishers. But if you really want to be thorough, which I was, because this was my first attempt at international publishing, I would say again, hold back and then send the book after these two more drafts to what I would call a line editor. In my blog, I mentioned a lady called Marlene Edelstein in the US, um, who's, uh, who I thought was an excellent line editor. And the line editor is now getting into line by line, word by word editing. And through that journey, they'll again really, really sharpen and clean up the manuscript, but also once again, raise some important questions that you may have missed again. Uh, in this draft and then uh, you come back again and then do two more drafts. So that's the two, two, two rule, uh, two drafts on your own, two drafts the, after uh, you share it with the descriptive editor and then two more drafts after you share uh, your manuscript with the line editor.
right? So, so these six drafts, and now your novel is ready to go to a literary agent or a publisher. Before that, I don't think your effort is quite complete, especially as a debut novelist who hasn't gone through this exercise before. Um, for me, as I said, from a timing perspective, it took me about uh, about four months or five months to do the first two drafts. And then um, I sent it to Sarah Cypher. She gave her comments back in about, I think, three weeks time. So that's kind of the sixth month. And then after that, I again spent about three months after that uh, on doing draft number three and draft number four. So the good news is that the timing keeps shrinking for the final two drafts. And then um, once again, I sent it to uh, Marlene Edelstein, who sent me her comments back in a month. And I did, and I did two more kind of drafts after her line edits. And, and I think the entire cycle took about 12 to 14 months, right? But then um, the novel was good enough to kind of share it with the world. And I think immediately after sharing it, so, so the way my journey worked was that I did the first, I, I did the two, two, the two original drafts and then two with uh, Sarah Cypher after Sarah Cypher's comments and I sent it out and I got a lot of rejections from literary agents, right? So I knew something was wrong. But as soon as I kind of finished the Marlene draft, I got, I think, six of the top 10 literary agents in the in the US kind of reached out to represent me. I chose one and then I got a publishing deal within a week. So this kind of upfront time investment and even the dollars that you invest in or, or rupees that you invest in getting a freelance editor, I think really, really pays out in the end, right? So, so that's my second kind of like a bucket, which is about editing. And then uh, finally, I'm going to talk the the money portion, if you will, which is publishing and marketing, which uh, uh, is also the section in which I received the most number of questions. Um, and I'll share kind of some thoughts on that. Um, and I'm going to, again, separate publishing into literary agents and then actually dealing with the publisher and then marketing. Once again, I will, I'll split into different uh, segments. But uh, let's talk about publishing and marketing. Um, uh, just to kind of give you all the numbers very straight straight off, as you know from my blog also, if you look at my blog, I'm kind of very straightforward in sharing everything I know. And once again, I'm very, very straightforward in sharing my numbers as well. Uh, for a typical debut novel, which is good, which is decent, I would say that the average advance in India is about rupees 1 lakh or $2,000. And the average advance in the US is call it about $30,000. So, so one of the questions I receive a lot is, can I make a living of writing? I think that's the best way to think about it. It'll take you about 12 to 15 months to write. And then after that, your uh, advance against royalties will be 2,000 in India and 30,000 in the US and call it a few thousand dollars if, if you're able to sell in other territories, which is typically harder uh, until you have a US team, right? So, so is the money sufficient? I mean, it's very subjective, but obviously on the surface, it doesn't look very sub, uh, sufficient. Uh, in my case, again, being very transparent with my numbers, this was my, my third novel was actually my debut novel in the US. In India, my advance was much higher than 2000 because I had a, uh, a rider base, uh, a reader base there. So I think it was in the four or five lakh range. Not, again, not too much, but it's like, you know, uh, eight to $10,000. So, uh, so about $10,000 was the India advance. And my US advance was about $80,000. Although it was a debut novel because there was a bit of a bidding war for the novel. Um, uh, so it was about $80,000. So if you add up, it's about ninety to $100,000. And then I'm still selling rights to other territories which I think is significant, you know, like as a, you could like in probably in hundred thousand dollars, like obviously you probably can't live in New York or Brooklyn or whatever, but you know, you can live in many parts of the world and be very uh, successful. So, so I guess, um, so now I can share kind of like, how do you get to that hundred thousand dollar US and India deal um, from a publishing perspective, that's been my own journey. So I can share that, um, you know, quite openly. Um, my first advice is, definitely get a literary agent, right? Uh, there's, there's not even a question in my head that a literary agent is the right way to go. You shouldn't be reaching out directly to a publisher. A literary agent will help you connect to the best publishers in the publishing industry who are best linked to your novel. A literary agent will also help you find the novel and make it more sellable so that they'll go through, I guess, another couple of round of edits. And, and in general, they more than make up for the commission they charge by um, you know, by, by what they do for the novel, right? So, so definitely hire a literary agent. Again, I get a lot of questions on how does the structure work with a literary agent and fees and stuff. And, uh, and it's pretty simple. They charge a commission when they make a sale. So you should never contract with a literary agent who's asking you money for representation because a good solid literary agent will never ask for money for publication. 
and um, and they let you work on a commission. And that commission again varies on uh, like depending on what deal you strike, and uh, but it typically I would say is about ten to fifteen percent. Fifteen percent is perhaps the right word, like is is kind of the right benchmark. So literary agent will charge you fifteen percent for the te- the main territory, U.S. and India, and twenty percent for international, something like that, in which the more effort is required. And I think that money is very well, or the commission is very well earned by them if they do sell their book, uh, sell your book. So. So they are a commission against both your advance and your royalty at a standard fifteen percent. So they get money only if they make the sale, and if they don't make the sale, they get no more, no money. So, so that's kind of the journey. That's the literary agent uh, finances. Now, how do you find a good literary agent? Again, for me, it took me four months to find a literary agent, or or the literary agent who was a good fit for me, and and frankly, one week to get a publishing deal. So it's actually harder to get an agent than to get a publishing deal. Uh, how to find a literary agent? Uh, the great news is that the process is very, very democratic, um, and uh, I would say I would highly recommend every writer to get a subscription for Publishers Marketplace (PM) Publishers Marketplace. I think it's twenty-five dollars a month, and that is a very comprehensive list of all the agents and all the editors and all the books and all the book deals being made. So you can through various searches. Uh, find out agents in your exact genre, or in the kind of book that they've sold, or in the kind of uh, publisher uh, that they typically sell to. So, based on multiple search criteria, you can find the exact agent in your genre and send them the query. Uh, and the query again is a very democratic one-page uh, letter that again I've explained in my blog. And then there are obviously thousands of articles on the internet on the query, so I won't get into details of that. But it's a simple one-page format, which is very democratic. You can send it to uh, every agent simultaneously. And then hopefully, uh, m- more than one agent will reach out to you. Typically, the rule of thumb I use is that if you are getting um, more than a ninety percent reject, if more than ninety percent of agents are rejecting you, then you really need to fix your query because if if you've sent your query to ten agents and nobody asks you for a full manuscript, that means that there's something wrong with the query. So I would really modify your query. And then once you uh, send the final manuscript, if one out of ten agents, if nine out of ten agents are Rejecting you, then once again you don't have a good manuscript. You have to really work on the manuscript, the beginning, uh, the end. You know, just kind of really finding the manuscript. But um, but you can read all of these details on my blog on how to actually go through the uh, act of writing a query letter and then sending it to an agent, uh, sending it to an agent, and then what the rejection rate is. Again, so as you can see, for even in these best figures, you will be rejected seventy five percent of the time. Especially the more breakthrough your story. The more agents will reject you, right? So if you're not writing about vampires and dystopian fiction or young adult novels that are very on trend right now, you will be rejected until you find the right agent for your needs, right? So, so there's no, I, I don't think there is any kind of, there's no shyness in admitting that every author will be rejected. I was rejected like I think 50 or 60 times before I found the agent uh, who was the right fit for the novel, and and I think that'll happen to you as well. But once you do find that person, that's extremely rewarding. My only other advice on literary agents is that. The sky is truly the limit. The democratization of the process means that you can reach out to any agent and you can find their contact information on Publishers Marketplace. So, in my case, I was made an offer of representation by uh, Jody Reamer, who is uh, the literary agent for Stephanie Meyer, uh, Twilight, New Moon, etc. So, she's such a established agent. I was a complete debut novelist who was writing about something which was. Completely off the mainstream, and yet I got. But I, I like. I was very committed to find the best agent, so I did find her. Right. So uh, she liked my book, and then she represented me. Eventually, I went with a different agent, Molly Glick, who's my current agent, and again a very, very outstanding agent in the U.S. And uh, and so she. So I, so my advice is that you can really dream for the highest, work towards getting the best agent in the country if your book is good, and if you've gone through the process that I talked about, editing it multiple times. Uh, you will have a strong enough manuscript that does command attention from the best, right? So, so that's kind of the journey of getting a literary agent. Now, once you have a literary agent, she'll probably he or she will probably go through a couple of round of edits with you, and then you are ready to submit it to publishers. Again, the question keeps coming up to me: Should I self-publish or should I go with a publisher? Again, I'm very, very clear on this. Find a mainstream publisher if you can. Um, Mainstream publishers will give you three things that uh, self-publishing will never give you. One is 
an equal investment in editing, which means um, if you're self-published, you can still get an editor to work for it, but they will never be vested as into it, into the book as much as somebody who's actually putting his, his or her money on the line to publishing your book. So they'll edit the book with excellence. So I've had excellent experiences with HarperCollins in India for my first two novels, Keep of the Grass and Johnny Gone Down. And for The Seeker, uh, my US editor, uh, Chiki Sarkar, my Indian editor, and Jake Morrissey, my US Penguin editor, were outstanding. I think the book would nowhere be, would be half as powerful as it is today without Jake and Chiki. So I think, again, I would never be able to match the quality of editing uh, through my own resources. So the quality of editing is the number one reason why I prefer international publishers. Uh, the second reason is widespread distribution. So with self-publishing, you're kind of limited to the e-world. Um, with like mainstream publishing, you get access to bookstores and all of that stuff, especially if your book becomes a priority book, it'll be very, very well supported with mainstream distribution. Again, you can never match that with self-publishing. And then the third thing is credibility, right? Anybody can be self-published, but to get a big publishing deal, requires a level of quality that is higher and that's the truth so i would again say go with the mainstream publisher don't get into the nickels and dimes of how self-publishing is better or you know like there's no frankly it's very hard to break out as a self-published novelist the, the chances are much higher as a um, as a novelist published by a mainstream uh, publisher now how do the finances work again the same question is asked often as i said in india my uh, guess is that the average advance is $2,000 in the US is $30,000. Um, so that's kind of the average. Uh, I minus close to $100,000 combined in India and the US. Uh, and the way this works is that that's an advance against royalties. And royalties is a percentage that you um, get for every book that's sold. So that again varies. I, it can vary from 75 to 10% or 12.5% depending on how successful you as a writer so my indian deal is probably on the higher end because um, i you know i guess have a fan base and stuff uh, the us deal is on a lower end so basically with every book that's being sold i get 10 percent up till but that money starts coming only after the advances uh, paid out right so they have given me an eighty thousand dollar advance so only after they sell enough books to cover the eighty thousand dollars will i start seeing my royalty checks coming right so that's how the uh, financial model kind of works um i think that's about it in terms of like publishing uh, uh like uh, you know uh, to work with mainstream publishers now the u.s publishing industry is consolidated only five or six main publishers with many imprints within it uh and you can get into all of these details with your agent once you get an agent who'll actually know exactly who to pitch to how the process works after you do get a publishing deal is i would say the timeline because that's very important everybody's in a rush to get their book out but just to give you an average timeline, once you get a publishing deal, it'll take one year for the book to get in market in India. And I would say almost two years to get to market in the US. That's my kind of rule of thumb. Uh, nine to 12 months in India and 18 to 24 months in the US. Why does it take such a long time after the deal is signed I, to break the, break the timing up in the US? It, uh, I got a deal in April of last year. From April to August, frankly, we were just signing the contract and going. The, my agent was going back and forth on contract negotiations. Once the contract negotiations were done, uh, my editor sent all the edits that had to be made in the book as on the first round. Between August to, um, uh, to between August to call it March of this year, uh, so call it six months, we were frankly just editing the book again and again. I would send back edits, they would come back with more edits. I would send back edits, they would come back with more edits. So that whole process took about six months because they're extremely thorough with editing. And these are both a combination of descriptive and line and copy edits. And once the book is done, it basically goes into a queue uh, and a schedule because again, the, in the US, the timelines are much more stretched out than in India. Um, that once it does get into copy editing, then there is jacket cover to be designed, then there is scheduling based on other authors, then it goes on to pre-orders in Amazon or and then it goes into actually into stores. So that whole journey can take another year. So I would say after you get a publishing deal, one year to get contract and edits out of the way, and one year after that to, for the publisher to plan for your uh, novel to get out in the market. Right, so it's kind of a long, so I think if you look at the overall timeline, zoom out a little bit and look at the overall timeline, I would say it takes one quality year to get a, to write a good book, and two years after that to, uh, to find a 
publisher and uh, the publishing process eventually happening to get the book out. So it almost takes three years as a debut novelist to get published uh, from, you know, from initiation of the idea to final in market. In, the, in India, I would say the time compresses to 18 months, but you have to be prepared for something like that. That's what I'm saying. You're going to invest a lot of your life and a lot of your time into writing. Uh, make sure it matters, you know, like, I mean, uh, make sure you're writing an idea that you believe in. Make sure you're writing for a deeper reason than just seeing your name in print um, so that you can kind of stick through that entire period, right? So I talked about writing, I talked about editing, I talked about publishing, and then the final kind of set of questions that I get a lot are about marketing a book, right? That's a very popular area. And again, I'm a huge believer in marketing. I'm uh, also very unembarrassed and very shameless about marketing because as I said, I spent three years of my life completely committed to this book. So I don't want to give up and then say, I don't believe in marketing at the last moment. The reason I wrote the book is to touch a lot of people with my idea, right? So then I kind of, I'm a big believer in going all out in marketing. I would separate marketing into two types. Uh, one is public relations and then one is direct kind of marketing, advertising and all of that stuff. Uh, PR is heavily, I would say overrated, traditional PR agencies and stuff. First, be very, very clear. Do you truly have a hook in the book, right? Um, most people are writing about relationships between, call it mother and daughter, mother and sister, man, a man and friend. Really, what will a PR agency really approach the Times of India or the New York Times with, you know, that there's a novel about, um, you know, a relationship? Like that's been done so many times before. So do you really have this big hook in your book, whether fiction or nonfiction, that really a PR agency can truly get behind and pitch very distinctive stories to media? Right in this case with the seeker, I've got media interest because my book, uh, although fiction, is heavily about uh, yoga and meditation and mind control. So there's a lot of kind of a non-fictional angle uh, to it, which is making it interesting. Also linking with my own life of taking sabbaticals and stuff. So there's a there's enough in it to make a interesting story for media, right? Uh, so I'm getting some attention. Then my past two novels have done well, so there's some interest. If I was a, a frankly uh, when I wrote my debut novel, there was nothing much to celebrate. I did hire a PR agency. It was effective. But I think that same money, because a PR agency can be typically, even in India, is about a lakh a month or about $2,000 a month. If you're tight on money, I would take that same money and invest it into traditional marketing and advertising. When we think of advertising, some of you always think TV advertising. That's not what I mean at all. I actually think nobody should do video trailers and stuff on YouTube because there's no way of distributing it in a very efficient way. I'm a very, 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 very big believer in web advertising in a very, very targeted campaign, going exactly to the target audiences with targeted creative on a, on social platforms like Facebook and YouTube with heavy ad buys. Uh, uh, so Facebook, ad roll, Google Display Network, those are some of the networks that I think can actually uh, make the best use of your money. In India and in the US as well, I think uh, people are just touching all the agencies that exist to help book market. In India, there's no agency which is truly focused on book marketing. There is Think Why Not, but again, I don't think their strength is web advertising. Their strength is more, uh, I guess, creating a PR story, but not truly, um, you know, buying advertising and stuff. And so in India, there's no such agency. In the US agencies I've met, once again, are touching the surface. They have no, neither the publisher nor the agencies have any kind of sophistication in terms of marketing. Um, if you want to direct message me or Facebook me or email me or reach out through me through my blog, I can give you uh, the name of an excellent, excellent marketing agency in India who's actually working on my book. So it started by, uh, by two people who were in corporate jobs and have quit their jobs to, uh, you know, one designer and one marketer. And I can give uh, their details if you're very interested because I think that's the first time I've seen like a truly strong marketing happening on a book at a very uh, in, in in a way that every author can do and you don't necessarily need to be the biggest author in the country to get attention you can get the attention of the right target audience with the right marketing techniques so if you need uh, details about that i'll i'll share it with you uh, offline if you send me a message but they're, they're two very very talented individuals who have been working on my marketing campaign and this the, this i think will be the future of book marketing so again um, market your book well. Once you've gone through this whole journey of ideation to writing to actually execution, now is the time to truly get behind the marketing of your book and treat it very, very seriously. And hire a publisher. Hire a publicist. I'm not against a publicist, but hire it only if you think that it's a book. Um, 
so i think that completes the talking portion of my webinar i will i have received a few questions that i'll read out and answer uh, but for the most part i think that's about it you know uh, write edit and then get published um, with writing the one idea i would leave you with is a combination of entertainment and meaning you know uh, figure out an idea that has that combination in editing i would say definitely take the money and the time to hire freelance editors you can find the names on my blog so that's the takeaway from that on publishing you need a literary agent and the process is hard but you it's very democratic so go find the best literary agent that you possibly can and then once you get into the publishing be patient it's very frustrating when you're in the process it's very time consuming but frankly the results are excellent it's, it fills you with a lot of joy when you see your book uh, come to life and then the amount of people who actually touch the book from editors to marketers to in-house you just realize that it's like creating a a full-fledged consumer product a brand and you I, you know you you learn a lot through that whole process so i i would say uh writing and publishing is a very very satisfying kind of process so uh, i'm going to now uh take up a few questions that have come up um and and i like uh, thank you for everybody who sent the questions i got about 50 to 75 questions so i won't be able to get a chance to read all of them but i'm going to read some of the most common ones uh, so girish asked me what the ideal length of a manuscript is and i think that's an excellent question because uh, sometimes the internet can be very misleading because people will say oh it doesn't matter it depends on the quality of the story it's actually untrue the 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 absolute truth is that it matters a lot and i would say the benchmark is 80000 words if you're writing 80000 words and i would say plus minus 10 or 15 maybe 65000 to 80000 or 80 to 100000 right so i would say 65 to 100000 is your limit if you go above 100000 it's very hard to get a deal as a debut novelist because publishers don't the economics of it with the size of the book etc don't work out for a debut novelist if you're less than 65000 words that's more in the category of a short story or a novella again which is a genre that doesn't sell so i would go razor sharp on 80000 words and um and you know and and again if you think of 3 months 1000 words a day uh, that's about 90000 words 10 days of rest in the middle you know weekends and stuff so i would say that that's that's why i said 3 month mark but i would say 80000 words is the target to hit after th going through the journey of editing 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 adding more deleting more you i think you'll end up with somewhere between 70 and 90000 which is a good number right so that's uh, so great question girish thank you for that um uh, abirup asked me whether you can email multiple agents or publishers um i would say ignore any advice on the internet to the contrary some agents have said that you can't email multiple people louis exclusively don't believe in any of that i would always email multiple people simultaneously if people like your book they'll go all out to represent it they won't care whether you follow that rule of one exclusivity or not don't get like bogged down by all of this stuff it's a uh, less than 1% of novels that are written are getting published uh, so the chance of publishing are not extremely high so i would say don't kind of put more rules to yourself and kind of constrain it further right so i would say definitely always email multiple agents with your query and the, and if you're going directly to a publisher email multiple publishers with your manuscript uh, abhishek asked me how do i find time to write with a demanding day job which i think is um, i guess a common concern and everybody in some form or the other has a demanding day job i don't know man i mean it's very hard to answer that question because i think time is an expanding com commodity if you are passionate about something you find a place to fit it when you're single your life is filled with single life you have a kid and you find space to accommodate your kid i think it's the same thing i have a child now i have a uh, a full time job now but i am passionate about marketing my book so i do find time to market the book and 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 kind of edit and write it i would i do say as i said earlier uh it it is you'll do yourself a service if you take uh, time off to write so if you take 3 months off to write you will do yourself a service after that i think you will find time my only other tip in this is what i call a peak performance life which means i give a lot of attention to my diet and exercise and as a, as a result i think i'm i i guess i have more energy than i had like i would say 10 or 15 years earlier when i was young right so uh, the, the so i'm i'm a big believer in diet and exercise like personally what i follow from an exercise i despite like having a full time job and then writing afterwards i'm always 5 to 6 days a week i do exercise with a combination of yoga running and stuff i think it's very very good for my mental performance diet wise again 
I'm very careful. I'm, I don't have much caffeine. I don't have uh, like soda and stuff, uh, reduced bread and sugar a lot. So I'm kind of like not taking any things that are heavy and chemical and processed. I'm very into, uh, you know, vegetables and uh, green juices and kind of like a, a plant-based diet. So I think a plant-based diet gives you a lot more energy. Again, these are very personal things, but, um, you know, this is a personal webinar. So I'm sharing what I think leads to higher energy. So today at 35, I'm, I guess, much more energetic than I was, uh, than I was at 25 only because of a diet and exercise regimen that works and allows more energy. And obviously, as many of you know from uh, my work, I'm a very big meditator as well. So I meditate at least half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the night every day. And again, that kind of like evens my thoughts out quite a bit. So, so that's how I find time. Um, Rishi asked that for Johnny Gone Down, which is uh, for those of you who haven't read a novel set in Cambodia and Brazil in the US and like many other places in between, did I visit all the places? And I think his broader question is, uh, do writers have to experience all the events that they like about, uh, that they write about? Uh, I think uh, it's a good question and my answer to that is yes, I did visit all the places, but uh, I visited the places out of interest and I didn't know that I was writing a book about them, but then the book followed. So again, my overall principle still holds, which is live an interesting life and the writing will follow. Uh, so, so I would say, I would rather not, I would, I would say to you, don't start thinking that you would write a novel about Greece, go to Greece because you want to go to Greece. And, and then maybe a novel comes out of that entire experience, or maybe the novel comes out of a different experience in which you've challenged yourself, taken a yoga class in your neighborhood or, you know, met some interesting person by by seeking them out. So, so once again, I would say uh, live an interesting life, and then I think these things kind of fall in place. But thank you for the question. Um, Jyotsna was very direct in asking me how much money, uh, or can you make enough money to retire? I think it's very subjective. Again, I would say as a debut novelist, uh, my guess is you can make you can barely touch six figures in U.S. terms, so about hundred thousand dollars, which is a significant amount. Um, but then when I think about marketing, setting up your own website, uh, you know, all of that stuff, I think, I, I don't think it's a break even proposition. So I think you do need some kind of a job, um, at least in order to kind of feel liberated and free emotionally to, uh, to pursue, uh, pursue your writing. So I think that's one more question which has come up often is, can you make enough money to retire out of it? Again, all these are, uh, if you do these steps, take the time to edit, write well. My hope is that you write such a, breakout novel that uh, like you could basically don't ever have to worry about money all your life but you know until then i think yes it's a little hard to make money from writing um i think those were some of the top questions that come i think the other question keeps coming up is about discipline but i've given my ideas on that 300 words a day if you're working thousand words a day if you're not working um and just kind of commit to doing that whether you feel the inspiration don't feel the inspiration etc etc uh, then uh, how do you come with an idea? Again, I've said my principles, read a lot, live an interesting life, always think of entertainment and meaning and you'll come up with an idea. I think that concludes, uh, for the most part, all the important things I wanted to cover today. Uh, this is the beginning, not the end. I'm sure there'll be other webinars. As always, I'm very accessible by email. Uh, email me at theseekerbook at gmail.com, which is theseekerbook at gmail.com. And, uh, and I think you should receive a pretty prompt answer if I know the answer to the question that you're writing about. Uh, and also, as you all know, The Seeker comes out in India next week, June 11th. Uh, it'll be in stores. Um, please support the novel. Um, it's, I think the, rep the reviews have been very, very strong on Goodreads this far, and I've spent many, many years of my life. So I believe that it's a, it's a, it's a powerful novel. So, you know, I hope you feel the same way. And see you soon. Uh, overall, I'll just conclude with one thought that, uh, uh, I, if, if by any means I've scared you through this whole process, that was not the intention. It's uh, a tough journey, but it is also one of the most rewarding things that you can ever do with your life because writing a book makes you live an extraordinary life. You are kind of compelled almost to live an extraordinary life. And I think for that purpose alone, I would say go and write today. Okay. So good luck and thank you for your time. Bye-bye.